When it comes to the NFL Draft, it's really just a numbers game. Teams looking to make more hits than misses throughout the seven rounds of the draft, with obviously greater chances of hitting in the early rounds and less likely as it goes on. However, even when looking at the first three rounds with the most physically talented players available, most teams are still only batting at around 50%. But what happens if a team bats 100% and not just hits, but knocking the ball clear out of the park? Well, look no further than the 2012 Seattle Seahawks NFL Draft Class. This upcoming offseason will mark one decade since the 2012 NFL Draft, so I think it's a good time to reflect on one of the greatest draft halls of this century. Entering the 2012 NFL Draft, the Seahawks were coming off a 7-9 campaign with a 23rd ranked offense led by Tavares Jackson and Marshawn Lynch, and a strong 7th overall ranked defense led by a strong secondary in Cam Chancellor, Earl Thomas, and Richard Sherman plus K.J. Wright at linebacker. So, what did general manager John Schneider and head coach Pete Carroll do with a draft class loaded with quarterbacks like Andrew Luck, Robert Griffin III, and Ryan Tannehill, and defensive studs like Luke Keekley, Stephon Gilmore, and Fletcher Cox? Well, they didn't panic. They traded back and gathered ammo and let the board fall to them in an absolute masterclass of patience. And what resulted is one of the greatest drafts any team has put together in the 21st century. That draft class took the Seahawks from a 7-9 team in 2011 to a dominant 43-8 stomping of the Denver Broncos in Super Bowl 48. And how did they get there? It all started in round one, pick 15 overall of the 2012 NFL Draft when the Seahawks chose defensive end and linebacker Bruce Irvin. A team already with a top 10 defense featuring the Legion of Boom decided to beef up their pass rush with their first selection instead of bolstering their below average offense. And we can't blame them because Irvin was solid especially considering the offensive talent available at that point in the draft. Were there better options on defense in hindsight? Sure, but Irvin has been no slouch himself. Irvin entered the NFL at 25 years old, which is old for an NFL rookie. So Bruce Irvin got straight to work. In his rookie year, Irvin got eight sacks, six tackles for loss, and a forced fumble and recovery. This earned him 2012 NFL All-Rookie Team honors. Irvin spent his first five seasons in Seattle, being a part of both Seahawks Super Bowl appearances, including their previously mentioned victory in Super Bowl 48 and their Super Bowl 49 loss to the Patriots, where, fun fact, Bruce Irvin became the first player in NFL history to be ejected from a Super Bowl. He then spent three seasons with the Raiders and some time on the Falcons in 2018. He spent the next one year in Carolina, where he got a career high in sacks at 8.5, including a safety at the age of 32. In 2020, he returned to the Seahawks, but unfortunately, he tore his ACL two weeks into the season, and he now sits as a free agent at 33 years old. In his career, Irvin has gotten 52 sacks, 64 tackles for loss, 16 forced fumbles, in three interceptions. While not the most dominant and not the best available when the Seahawks drafted him, he still turned in a solid career and contributed to the Seahawks' Super Bowl winning season. Moving to the second round of the 2012 NFL Draft, the Seahawks took Bobby Wagner with the 47th overall pick. Seattle doubled down on defense to bolster their already elite unit, but this time they got an absolute stud. Bobby Wagner is one of the best middle linebackers in all of the NFL who immediately took command of the center of that dominant Seattle defense. In his rookie year, at age 22, Wagner got 140 combined tackles, 9 tackles for loss, 2 sacks, and 3 interceptions. He played an integral part of the Seahawks' two Super Bowl appearances and has played for Seattle for his entire 10-year NFL career up to this point. 
Wagner has become the leader of this defense, as one of the last remaining players from the Legion of Boom era. Bobby Wagner has never had an off year. He's never had under 100 combined tackles during a season, with his career high being 167. Besides being a sure tackler, he is also an explosive playmaker, with one safety in his career and three touchdowns, including a crazy 98-yard pick six that occurred during the 2018 season. Wagner also racked up awards and honors during his career. He joins his fellow 2012 draft classmate Bruce Irvin in being selected to the 2012 NFL All-Rookie Team. But Wagner also has seven straight Pro Bowl appearances dating from 2014 all the way to 2020, and I see no reason why that streak won't continue. He's also received six first team all pro appearances in 2014 and then five straight after that from 2016 to 2020. In his career stats, back up these awards. Bobby Wagner has 1,246 combined tackles, 67 tackles for loss, 23 and a half sacks, and 10 interceptions in his career to this point. With a Super Bowl ring on his finger and an absurd stat line, Bobby Wagner has positioned himself well for a Hall of Fame induction in the future, and has certainly left his mark in Seattle as the team's best ever second round draft selection. And now, we reach the crown jewel. After going defense in the first two rounds and being patient, the Seahawks finally turn to the offensive side of the football. With the 75th pick of the 2012 NFL Draft, the Seattle Seahawks select quarterback Russell Wilson. Entering the NFL at 24 years old and at only 5 foot 11 inches tall, it's easy to see why old school NFL scouting principles would have Wilson fall to the third round. But Wilson immediately proved his value and took the Seahawks from a 23rd ranked offense the year before to a top 10 offense in his rookie year. Wilson was, and still is, a rare combination of throwing talent and rushing talent known for extending plays with crazy runs to avoid rushers and buying time before launching a perfectly accurate deep arcing ball that lands in the hands of his receivers. Wilson has always been smart with his throws, limiting turnovers and giving his team the best chance to win, and in the process allowing the dominant defenses of Seattle's past go to work. In recent years, Wilson has put the offense entirely on his back as the team transitions from the run-heavy days of Marshawn Lynch to the dynamic passing attack of Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf. No matter how it's done, Wilson was always a winner. Wilson holds the record for the most wins by a quarterback in his first nine seasons at 98. And unless something crazy happens, he should continue blazing that path. He also has the fourth highest career passer rating in NFL history up to this point. His best statistical season came in 2020 at age 32, when he threw for 4,212 yards in 40 passing touchdowns, combined with 513 rushing yards and two rushing touchdowns in one season. He has also received honors and awards from the very beginning of his career. Wilson earned Pro Bowl honors in his rookie year and has made the Pro Bowl for the past four years straight for a total of seven career Pro Bowl appearances. He was also the Walter Payton Man of the Year in 2020, and of course is a Super Bowl champion. And on top of all of this, his career stats are insanely efficient. Wilson has completed 65.2% of his passes for 34,543 yards, 273 touchdowns, with a 102.2 career passer rating up to this point. He also adds 4,531 rushing yards and 21 rushing touchdowns on the ground. But the biggest shock to me while researching this video was the fact that Russell Wilson hasn't won any Offensive Player of the Year awards, or any MVP awards, or let alone not even making the first team All-Pro list. That seems absurd to me. But in the end, it really doesn't matter. Russell Wilson has already solidified himself as the greatest quarterback in Seattle Seahawks history, and along the way, already winning a championship title. So, by the time his career is over, you could probably argue he has a spot in Canton. Now, before I end this video, we have to look at the rest of the draft. It's 
hard to imagine that this whole time we've been talking about only the first three picks and everything that they've accomplished. Now, the remaining selections were not so great. In the fourth round, they selected running back Robert Turbin, who played nine years in the NFL, four of those being with the Seahawks. His best season actually came in his rookie year with 354 rushing yards and 181 receiving yards that year. In his career, he only has 1,354 rushing yards and 9 touchdowns. The other Seattle Seahawks selection in the fourth round that year was defensive tackle Jay Howard. In the fifth round, they selected linebacker Corey Toomer. With their first pick in the sixth round, they chose cornerback Jeremy Lane who has two interceptions and a forced fumble to his name during his six years on the Seahawks. The other sixth round pick was defensive back Winston Guy. They also had two draft picks in the seventh round. With the first, they chose offensive guard J.R. Sweezy, who carved out a nice eight-year career with the Seahawks, Buccaneers, and Cardinals, five of those years being with the Seahawks. Their last pick was on defensive end Greg Scruggs, who ended his four-year career with three sacks. The Chicago Bears also claimed Scruggs after he was released from the Seahawks, and they tried to convert him to a tight end. It didn't work. While none of these guys were world beaters, some of them were able to carve out nice roles or backup spots for several years, which is really all you can ask for for later round draft picks. And that concludes the Seahawks 2012 draft class, carried heavily by the first three draft selections. But without this draft class, it's easy to argue the Seahawks would not have made it to two straight Super Bowls in 2014 and 2015, including winning it all in that 2014 season. Any draft could be considered a massive success if it included two potential Hall of Fame level talents. And that's exactly what this draft class accomplished. In general, the 2012 NFL Draft was really stacked throughout, and I could probably do a whole video dedicated to just that draft, but that's for another time. Today was all about the Seahawks, and I want to know, what are your thoughts? How would you rank the 2012 Seahawks Draft Hall? Do you think Bobby Wagner and Russell Wilson are Hall of Fame caliber players? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. I also invite you to subscribe and join our growing community of football nerds. I'd love to have you on board. And thank you so much for choosing to watch my content. And with that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.